Hey, Pastor Steve here, and this is our Sunday school class. I know that a lot of us are locked away and a lot of us can't get out of the house because of what's going on, but I wanted to let you know that every single day you can get into God's Word and you can start learning more and more as we go along. I wanted to share the scripture with you, and it's a scripture that Job had, had said back in Job 3, 25 and 26. It says, what I've always feared has happened to me. What I've dreaded has come true. I have no peace. I have no quietness, I have no rest, only trouble comes. You know, fear can actually get into our lives and it starts changing us, it starts transforming us. It actually starts causing those things that we're afraid of to come to pass in our own lives. The more that you dwell on something, the more it becomes reality to your body. You know, your body is not aware of what's going on it's only believing what your mind is telling it. So if you're afraid, guess what your body's going to do? It's going to start producing all these things that actually affect you. So let's take a look at a couple of scriptures that can actually help us to grow. The first thing I wanted to share with you is this. And I, I want you to know that I truly and really mean this. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now that doesn't mean that your soul is automatically prosperous. Your soul is whatever you believe. Your soul is where your heart is. Your soul is what, what's going on within your heart and your mind and your body. And all these things that come together within your life are dictated by what your soul is actually perceiving. So if you're perceiving fear and worry and doubt and all these things, guess what you're gonna get? That's exactly what's gonna happen. So if, you are absolute, if your soul is prosperous, if your soul is um, going out and doing the things that God created it to do, if your soul is actually being what you want it to be, then that's what your body and, and you're going to experience within your life. It's the way that God created us and the way that we should be. So when, when Job says things like, what I always feared has happened to me, what I dreaded has come true, that's exactly what happened to Job. You know, we like to say that God allowed Satan to be able to do all these things, but the reality is, is that that hedge of protection went down the moment that Job started fearing. You know, if we start fearing, if we start saying, oh wait, this coronavirus or whatever it is, is greater than what God has put into my life, then what's gonna happen is, is that it's gonna quickly come upon you. The cortisol that's released in your life is actually what's gonna happen within your body. That cortisol will go out and it will actually create adrenaline to start pumping. And it'll actually create this fear and this, this flight or, or this fight or flight or instinct within your body. You know, the moment that that happens, your DNA starts pulling apart, you start getting stress. And you know, the greatest killer in this world today is not this coronavirus, it's heart disease. And you know what causes heart disease? Stress. You know what causes heart disease? Dis-ease. You know, all these things that actually affect us are what actually affecting our hearts. And as our heart goes, so the rest of our body will go as well. So the moment that we go into this fight or flight, the moment that we start running away from things, the moment that we start saying, hey, wait a second, this fear thing has really grabbed a hold of me, the more that your body gets used to it. And you know, your body will actually start creating things to be afraid of. Let me ask you this question. The moment that you woke up this morning, did you go straight to Facebook? Did you go straight to see, to the to the news service to see what's happening, how many people died? Is corona in your neighborhood? I mean, a lot of these people are going through and they're saying, I'm expecting this, I want, I'm, I'm gonna see these things happen in my life. And you, the, moment that, the moment that you have a little dry cough, the moment that you think that you have a fever, the moment that um, you feel a little bit nauseous to your stomach, your, your mind is automatically telling your body, oh my gosh, this is the big one, I got it. Oh no, now I've got a self-quarantine in my bathroom. I'm gonna pack myself with ice and make sure that I make it through this whole thing and that I don't die. Now that's not where we should be. The moment that we feel a dry cough or the moment that we feel something in our throat, the moment that we see these things, we should immediately claim the word of God. No, I will live and I will not die. No, I am healthy, I am whole, I am complete. No, he's forgiven me of all of my sins, he's healed me of all my diseases. The moment that we start saying those things, that's the moment that we start getting all these good effects within our lives. Your body, if it produces negative results to, to bad news, what is it gonna do when it gets good news? It's gonna start producing the good effects that it needs. It's gonna start giving you the serotonin, the things that your body needs to be able to recreate and to start producing what your body needs to be able to succeed, to prosper, and to live to be 120 years. 
In fact, picking that up, your body was designed to live to be 120 years, just like what the Bible says. You know, that is the extent of where DNA will stop. Now, DNA has been created to be able to produce itself or reproduce itself for 120 years. The reason that we die early is because we end up affecting that DNA. All these negative thoughts, all these fears, all these stresses will actually cause your DNA to start pulling apart early. And that's where you start seeing the effects of age. So we want to change the way that we look at things. And in fact, Proverbs 23, 7, didn't, didn't Solomon tell us, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he? Well, that's absolutely where we're at. What your heart dwells on, that's what you're actually going to become. So why not put these good things in your heart and enable you to be able to see the good things that are there? Even Jesus Christ himself told us in Luke 6.45, a good person produces good things from the treasury of his heart. An evil person produces evil things from the treasury of his heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. So what are, what's in our heart actually is what is actually coming out of our mouths. So the moment that I speak something is the moment that I start receiving it in my life. Isn't that interesting? You know, we want to speak these things that God has put into our hearts. Speak good. Speak the things that, that we know are important for us. The moment that we start doing these things, then our heart is going to change and the words that come out of our mouth will change as well. The moment that you say something negative, immediately cancel it and start speaking the good things that God has put there. You know, if nothing else, at least say that, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because he's there with you. You know, in our study today, Aurora and I found that God himself has united us with Christ Jesus. In fact, my favorite verse, we were in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians 1, 9 says that Jesus Christ has called us into a partnership with himself. If he's your partner, what, is, what on earth is possibly going to happen bad to you? So we want to take God's heart, God's words to heart and dwell on these things. Proverbs 4, 4 tells us this. My father taught me, take my words to heart, follow my commandments and you will live. You know, if we take these words to heart, if we follow the instructions that Christ gives us, then we're going to live. You know, he gives us perfect instruction and perfect ideas on how we can live a life of victory and success. And yet we think of them as commandments and we think, oh my gosh, I can't believe that God is making me do these things. He's not making you do anything. What he's doing is he's giving you the instructions for success. If you want to drink a bottle of water, let me give you some instructions. This is a commandment. Take the cap off the bottle of water. I'm just saying, that's what's going to make you successful. And that's all that God is doing for us. His word completely and totally fills us with the good things. So if I find a promise in God's word, if I find instructions in God's word, you know what? He's taken these things and he's put them there so that I can succeed and that I can prosper. You know, further on in the fourth chapter of Proverbs, we read this. Take hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. Guard them for these are the keys to life. You know, the keys to life are God's words. If God enables us to be able to see what he promised, if he enabled us to be able to read it out of his word, if he put it there so that we can speak it, so that we can live it, so that we can start taking it, then we should start guarding it because this is what God has promised for us. You know, right before Jesus left this earth, he went out and he promised the, the disciples. He told them this. He said, I'm leaving you with a gift. I'm giving you peace of mind and heart. The peace I give you is a, world, is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus Christ has promised us this, that we can succeed in everything that we set our hands to because you know what? God has promised that he'll give us these things. He's promised to give us peace. And you know what? If he's given us peace, then we no longer need to be troubled and we no longer need to be afraid. You know, I can cast out fear and I can speak to it now. I can tell it to leave. I can cast troubles out and tell it to leave as well. Psalms 23, 6 tells us this. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. You know, God's goodness is actually in pursuit of you. All you have to do is stop and let it happen. You know, his unfailing love is in pursuit of you. And if you pursue these things, then you know that you can possibly accomplish all that God has intended for you. Isaiah 35, 4 tells us this. Say to those who are fearful in heart, be strong and do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. So I can speak it. I can do it. 
I can speak to my body, I can speak to the lives of other people, even as I'm doing right now. You can even share it. You can take this on Facebook and you can share it with all your friends, or you can post it to YouTube, you can do whatever you want with this video. I don't care, as long as you take it and you start living a life of victory. As you do these things, then you're gonna start seeing God's work in your life. Well, I really encourage you to share this on Facebook. I encourage you to pass this around any way that you see fit, and you're more than welcome to take these words and start living again. Stop listening to what the world is telling you. Stop dwelling on what Facebook says. Stop dwelling on what the news says. Start dwelling on what the Word of God says. Well, God bless you, and I hope to see you next week.